Life is never a bed of roses and after Professor Vishkanta's father passed away, life was extremely difficult. His mother was unable to make both ends meet. Professor Vishkanta recalls, The following years were riddled with hardships. Poverty was killing us. My mother, who fed so many poor Brahmin boys, was unable to provide a square meal for her children. More often than not, we had to go to bed hungry. I had two elder brothers and one elder and one younger sister. On one occasion, my elder sister made all of us sit and explained our plight. She said, Now we are in deep trouble because of father's death. Promise me that come what may, even if you have to go hungry for long periods of time, you will never ever beg. At that time, I was only eight years. I decided to take up a job and I started working in a printing press that belonged to my father's friend. The owner, knowing our plight, gave me this job against his will as I would not accept arms. My job was to sort out 10,000 lined sheets per week and to discard the sheets that didn't have straight lines. For this, I was paid one rupee per week. Whenever I came home and handed the rupee to my mother, she would cry. My mother, who used to live like a queen with numerous servants to serve her, was now cooking food in different homes as and when opportunities arose. However, I continued my education and graduated from school and joined college. When I was in second year of college, my health was in shambles. The food deprivation and the state of near starvation had taken its toll on my health. Due to hyperacidity, my intestines were riddled with multiple ulcers which were confirmed in the X-ray. I was admitted in Government Victoria Hospital where they treated me for a few days. In the hospital, I was fortunate to receive two square meals. However, the doctor in charge asked the superintendent to discharge me, saying, Why kill this boy in the cell? Let him go home and die peacefully. When I overheard this, my spirit was completely shattered and I was sent home. The doctors had prescribed some antacids and sedatives upon my discharge. My family was not much help to me. I felt I was more of a liability rather than an asset to them. In utter desperation, I decided to end this wretched life. Over the week, I collected a handful of sedatives from various pharmacies and then I wrote a letter stating, to whom it may concern. I am ending my life and no one is responsible for my action. Then I swallowed the entire lot of sedatives late one night. My mother who used to get up early in the morning came to my room to check on me. She tried to awaken me. Then she saw the letter that I had written and it dawned on her what had happened. Hence, she started shaking me vigorously and started sobbing. As this was taking place, I was out of my body and looking down at my mother. In vain, I was trying to tell her that I was fine and happy now. But she couldn't see or hear me. But what surprised me the most was that an old man who resembled Sai Baba was standing there. I could clearly see that he was not at all pleased. In fact, he was quite vexed and angry at what I had done. However, the ambulance was called and my body was put in it and taken to the hospital. Since the link between my body and soul was not severed, I could perceive the pain of being dragged along the body. In the operating theatre of the hospital, my body was laid on the table while I was sitting on top of a steel cupboard and gazing down at everyone. But most importantly, Baba had come along and was standing next to the cupboard 
very close to me or my soul. The doctor and his assistants first cleaned my stomach. Then they used a defibrillator and gave me electric shocks on my chest. At that moment, Baba, who was standing next to me, thumped me on my back and commanded, Get in at once. I was sucked into my body and slowly woke up. I was kept in the hospital for observation and in the afternoon, the doctor discharged me. After this terrible experience, everything started improving. I and all my siblings are well educated and well settled, but most importantly, we are all ardent devotees of Baba. Baba absolutely disapproved of any devotee contemplating suicide. In Chapter 26 of the Sri Sai Satcharita, the story of Ambedkar is given, who is fed up of his wretched, destitute life and decided to end his life in Shirdi. However, at that juncture, Shagun Meru Naik came to him and gave him Swami Samarth Charitra. Ambedkar read it and did not follow through on his plan. We are given this body and are responsible for all the happenings, good or bad. We have to undergo the cycle in this life and clear the debt. This should be done in this life only. Otherwise, it will be carried forward to our next life. We cannot escape the cycle of karma. This Leela is narrated by Professor R. Vishkanta in November 2014.